Welcome to section 17.7. .7. So we're going to continue our discussion on solubility and we're going to focus in on gaseous solubility into liquids. Now, when a gas tries to dissolve into a liquid, there is an equilibrium that is taking place. What is happening is you are going to have gas particles that are surrounded by my liquid particles. Now, when that gas particle gets towards the surface of the liquid, it can escape and fly off into the atmosphere. And you've got to remember that gases are chaotic things. They like to fly off into every direction that they can. Now, what is also happening is that my gas particles that are at the surface, well, they can kind of bury themselves around liquid molecules and be trapped and caged inside there. Now, what we can do is we can affect the solubility of our gas particles. If I were to suddenly increase the pressure, what you guys can think of is I'm starting to force gas particles into the liquid. I'm pressing down. And so if I increase the pressure, more particles will go towards the surface. More particles will be buried in solution. And this relationship gets us to Henry's law. What Henry's law tells us is that if we increase the pressure of our gas, the concentration of our gas in solution will go ahead and increase. And there is some proportionality to that called Henry's Law's constant. Now, I'm going to warn you guys, the version that your book gives you is the equation in this form where pressure equals Henry's Law's constant times the mole fraction. Now, this is kind of an unusual way to express this formula. Usually what people will say is that pressure equals Henry's Law's constant times some concentration. And sometimes that concentration is mole fraction, like your book. A lot of the times it's going to be molarity or grams per liter. So you'll see a variety of Henry's Law's constants. What is important is you guys make sure you look at the units and remember the underlying concept. The idea is you increase pressure, you increase solubility, which means you increase the concentration of the gas. A classic example of this is a two liter bottle of soda. So if you guys remember taking a soda bottle, it is under pressure. You can feel that the plastic is nice and taut. You guys go ahead and crack open the top, you release the pressure, and then all of a sudden you start to see your soda fizzle. Now the reason that happens is because you release the pressure, so you're going to decrease the solubility of gas. If you decrease the solubility of gas, it's going to go out of solution, and that's why you get that good fizziness come out. Now speaking of soda bottles, let's go ahead and continue with what happens with the solubility of gas. Let's say you take a two liter bottle of soda, nicely sealed, and you place it in your car on a nice Santa Barbara hot day. Well, what you're going to come to is a big mess in your car eventually. And the reason this happens is because the solubility of the gas went down. And so all the gas is rushing out of solution. The pressure builds up and eventually it explodes all over your back seat. Now, the question is, why does this occur? Well, it turns out that if you increase the temperature, so your nice hot car, you decrease the solubility. How can thermodynamics help us explain this? So let's go ahead and look at our delta G equals delta H minus T delta S formula. And you'll notice that the temperature term is fixed to our delta S term. Let's think about delta S in terms of dissolving a gas. If we think about this, gases are chaotic particles. And so what happens is it is nice and free flowing. It's bouncing all around. But when you dissolve it in solution, you're kind of caging that chaotic particle. You're, you're confining it into a defined space. And so you're giving it less freedom, less chance to ricochet around. And so in essence, you're bringing less chaos into that gas particles. So for dissolving a gas, this is one of the few instances that a dissolution process is going to have a negative delta S. You are bringing more order to the system. So if that's the case, if my del delta S is negative, well, this whole term becomes positive. 
And what you guys will notice is that if we increase my temperature, you will see that this is going to start to go up. And if you make it more and more positive, well, then delta G becomes more and more positive, and thus the solubility goes down. So for most gases, as you increase the temperature, the solubility is going to go down. Now, if you guys remember, in my last lecture, I said delta S is usually going to be positive when you're dissolving things. And that is very true for solids. For solids, delta S is going to be greater than zero. And so if we look at what happens with delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, if this term is positive, well, that means this whole thing is going to be negative. And so as you increase the temperature, you're going to become more and more negative, And that means you're going to be more and more spontaneous. In other words, for solids, as you increase the temperature, you are going to increase solubility. And you guys will see that in this graph. And this should make sense through everyday life. If you guys have ever tried to dissolve salt or sugar and water, you guys can warm it up and then you can see the solids start to dissolve. Now, there are a few exceptions out there, but notice that these are exceptions and they're going against the majority of solids dissolving into liquid. So that's all for that section. Let's finish off with this little quiz. Go ahead and mark the right answer, but work this out, and we'll see if you guys can understand Henry's Law. All right, gentle people, I'm going to write Henry's Law in the more generic version that I told you guys about, which is going to be Henry's Law equals Henry's Constant times some concentration. And so in this case, I want to find Henry's Law's constant, so then I'm going to go ahead and bring that concentration term over to the other side. I'm going to put in the values in my experiment, 1 atm, and then this is going to be 27 grams that I dissolved in 1 liter. And so if I run this calculation out, I get 0 0.037 atm liters per gram. Now, this is a typical version of Henry's Law's constant. Again, you guys will see this in different formats. Some will be mole fraction, some will be molality. But in this case, this is going to serve our purpose. So just be sure to look at what units they want for Henry's Law's constant. Now, let's take a look at the second part of that problem, which was go ahead and find the solubility at a new pressure. So again, we're going to write Henry's Law, and we're going to go ahead and solve for concentration this time. Pressure over Henry's Law's constant equals my concentration. So let's go ahead and plug in our values, 12.5 atms, and the Henry's Law constant that we found, 0 0.037 atms per liter per gram equals our concentration. And so if we go ahead and calculate this out, what we get is 338 grams per liter. And so what I want you guys to remember with Henry's Law is always pay attention to the units. These are dimensional analysis problems at their heart. Well, I hope that made sense to you, Chem1C, and again, stay safe.